Hi everyone, I'm Lawrence and welcome to the second volume of PSP games you might not know. Chiricon Carnage is the sequel to the PS2 game Total Overdose, which isn't from a different franchise like you will think from the totally different title, in fact you get to play as the same character. Chiricon Carnage is an over the top shooter that you'll instantly fall in love with. The gameplay is the same in all of the levels, do acrobatic moves in slow motion like in Max Payne and shoot the bad guys. And even if on paper, haters will call this game repetitive, it never felt repetitive to me. I mean, even if I had to do the same stuff on paper, the different environments and the jokes that kept on coming made it an amazing experience. Also, I love the vibe of the game. You're wreaking havoc on mariachi music. If you ever have a bad day, this one is a great game to cheer you up. And this story part isn't everything the game has to offer. You have frenzy modes too, and challenges, where you still wreak havoc with the same mechanics as in the main game, but still, they're welcome because they give you even more reasons to use the great gameplay mechanics. The only complaint I have with the game is the checkpoint system. When you die, you can rewind time and get a health boost. Problem is, if you're out of rewinds, you restart the level. So there are no checkpoints really, you have rewinds, which are nice and helpful, but I would have liked some checkpoints too. Still, I can't really hold it against it. It's an amazing game. So even if the description of the game isn't long, it's over the top and great gameplay along the funny story will keep you hooked. And if you're like me, you're going to love the game. Broke Down High is amazing. I remember the first time I got to play the game, I was hooked. This game is a high school simulation game. You create your character and do what you want in a high school. You can make your character whatever you want, but you can only do so much. And what I mean by that is that for example you can choose to study the evening or to go on a date, but that means if you study the evening you'll miss out on dates and if you do both you'll miss out on sleep and it's kinda like in real life but at a faster pace in a video game. You can flirt with girls, you can talk to virtually anyone in the school halls, you can make new friends, be a jock or a nerd or a ladies man or the female correspondent to those. I guess that will be a cheerleader, a nerd and um, female correspondent for ladies man, N man lady. Anyway, the idea is that you are given the time of the day and you can do whatever you want in that time. And it's what you choose that determines what type of person you end up being. And it's interesting that when the bell rings, everyone runs frantically to any curse. Just to not get caught by the hallway robots and get detention. Also by talking to people you boost your popularity, which will enable you to date popular chicks. Overall, the game is awesome and really hooks you. I like the game and I recommend it to you. It's a hidden gem. At least that's how I consider it. You should at least try the game, it's, it's awesome. The Elder Scrolls Travels Oblivion was supposed to be a new story exclusively for the PSP. It wasn't made by Bethesda, but by Climax Studios. They started development in 2005, so it was developed at the same time as Oblivion, but because of the limitations of the PSP, the game was supposed to be a linear action adventure. The project was cancelled, but we still have the demo version, to have an idea of how the game would have ended up. Well, it looks good, but the demo lacks plenty of physics, dialogue lines and other stuff to make it cohesive enough or deep enough. I mean, the gameplay is repetitive, the combat is more of a button measure, the demo is very linear and with the lack of physics it feels like a beta, because, well, technically it still is. You can play half an hour of the game and if the game would have ended exactly like in the demo, I can understand Bethesda cancelling the PSP version. It just isn't good enough. But if they would have polished the game, gave it more physics and more gameplay mechanics, which is unlikely, then the game is a missed opportunity. Coded Arms looks better than the game actually is. The graphics are good looking and the gameplay mechanics are good too. Controls are responsive too, problem is, the game is super generic and repetitive. The story is generic, the gameplay is generic, I mean all you do is shoot, you even have auto lock, 
which means that you barely have to even aim. You just switch weapons and move around pressing the trigger. And the repetitiveness will be okay if at least you'd get a good story to keep you hooked. But the story isn't interesting enough to hook. The gameplay mechanics are good, I mean you get plenty of weapons to choose from and you can even hack and you can even hack robots and make them fight for you, but since the AI is brain dead and you also have auto aim, you never feel like putting the mechanics to good use. The graphics, even if they are good, you get so many washed out locations with the same color palette that the graphics aren't that interesting anymore. Also fun fact, this was the first first person shooter game released on the PSP. So the PSP kinda had a rough start on the first person shooter department. But hey, if you're okay with a super casual, super repetitive shooter, then this game might work for you. It's not a bad game, it's just that it failed in some aspects and now the game is generic. Darkstalkers Chronicle the Chaos Tower is a port of the Japan only Dreamcast game Vampire Chronicle for matching service, and sums up the stories and content of all three previous installments. The game has all characters from all three games, totaling a number of 18 characters. As for the stories, don't worry, you're not getting any super detailed plot. It's a port of a game released in the year 2000, as a mail order game via Dreamcast Direct, so the plot is bearable as it used to be in arcade games like this. But still, the gameplay is the star and execute it amazingly on the PSP. Sure, some combos are harder to pull off because, the PSP's, because of the PSP's button layout, but the game still remains a super solid experience, and arcade fighter fans should be able to enjoy the game. Also, it's nice that the game has an option for classic controls and easy controls. 